Hello, in this video we are going to introduce two important concepts and components for designing mechatronic systems. We are going to explain the concepts of pull-up and pull-down resistors and we are going to explain what are interrupts and how to efficiently detect events using interrupts. We are going to use a Raspberry Pi microcontroller. Although everything that I will explain in this video can be applied to Arduino microcontrollers. The circuit that you can see over here demonstrates the basic usage of pull-up resistors. We want to make sure that the state, that the digital state at the GPIO27 is always defined. That is, if we press the switch, the state should be zero, and if you leave the switch open, the state should be one. That is, the state should be corresponding to 3.3 volts. Now, imagine that we didn't have this pull-up resistor, and that we want to read the state from GPIO 27. If we would do digital read, the value, the voltage value at GPIO 27 will be floating, that is, it will be undefined, can be a random value, and this can create problems in our codes. That's why we want to make sure that the state is always defined, and by using the pull-up resistor, we are ensuring this. So, if the switch is open, the voltage at GPIO 27 will be approximately equal to 3.3 volts, that is equal to digital high. This is due to the pull-up resistor and the internal impedance of the microcontroller. I will explain this in detail in the next uh, few slides. On the other hand, if we close the switch, the GPIO will be grounded, that is it will be equal to the digital zero. This is how the circuit is being realized using a cobbler and a breadboard. Here is our button, so we can switch this button, we can press it, and here is our 4.7K resistor, 4.7K pull-up resistor, you can also use 10K resistor. So, let's see what happens when the switch is not pressed, that is when the button is not pressed. So I have attached my GPIO pin to the oscilloscope and you can see over here this is the voltage reading when the button is not being pressed. So the average voltage value is 3.07 volts. That's approximately equal to 3.3 volts from the Arduino power supply. So if I press the switch my voltage goes to approximately 3. Point, let's say 3.1 millivolts. That is, that's the logical zero. So the by switching this, by pressing, by pressing the button, we can ensure that the voltage value goes up or down, so that we can detect digital 1 or digital 0. So I'm now pressing, I'm releasing, pressing, releasing, pressing, releasing, pressing, releasing. Now, I've created a code that counts how many times the button is being pressed. I have to mention that here I'm not using digital read function, I'm using interrupts to detect when the button is being pressed. This is very important and a very efficient way of detecting events since you save the processor time. Interrupts are only activated when something happens. So if I press the button once here, two, three times, but you can see over here that basically once I press, there were two measurements. This, this phenomenon is called 
a debouncing phenomenon. This is a negative phenomena, and there is a software way and hardware way of uh, curing this phenomenon. So I'm pressing now 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. So once it may happen that once you press it, the signal debounces. And here you can see on the oscilloscope what happens. And you might even see over here a debouncing phenomenon. That's negative. So special care has to be taken to avoid this phenomenon. So let us explain in more details basic usage of pull-up resistors interrupts. And let us explain uh, the Raspberry Pi code I created for attaching the interrupts. I've created a post with the detailed uh, descriptions and the detailed explanations of the Raspberry Pi code and the link to this code is given in the description below. Imagine that you have a microcontroller and that you have an input pin. And imagine that you want to read a voltage value from this digital, let's say, input pin. So. What will happen if you just do a digital read from this pin? What is the voltage value? That is, what is the state of the pin? If the voltage is high, then the state is 1. And if the voltage is low, then the state is 0. So every controller, microcontroller, has certain tolerances. Let's say if you have a Raspberry Pi microcontroller and let's say a digital one will be in the voltage range of, uh, let's say, 3 to, let's say, 5 volts. And digital 0 will be, let's say, below 0 0.5 volts. However, what happens if you directly read this input pin without having any device or any electrical circuit input attached to the input? Well, the state will be undefined. You want to avoid that. You want to make sure that the state is always low or high, that is either 0 or 1. So to achieve this we can use pull-up resistors. So here is our resistor R1 and here is a basic circuit similar to the circuit I used at the beginning of this video. Now VCC is the voltage coming from, let's say, power supply. It can be 5 volts or 3.3 volts. Now, if this switch is open, that is, if the button is not being pressed, the readings at the input pin will correspond to VCC. That is, the voltage at this point, or better to say potential, will be approximately equal to VCC. So, why is that? and under which conditions this is ensured. Well, you can represent this circuit by the following circuit. So every microcontroller and its every input pin has some internal impedance. So internal impedance is just a fancy word of saying resistance. So this is the resistance. Now if you consider this circuit without having this switch or when this switch is open, the current will go through this path. The current will go through this path. Now, if R2 is much larger than R1, then the voltage at this point will be approximately equal to VCC. You can see this from the basic formula for the voltage divider. So here is our basic form formula for the voltage divider. This formula gives you the voltage at the point VA, or better to say potential. Now, if R2 is much larger than R1, then the potential at the point A will be equal to VCC, because this term over here will approach 1. Now. This is the main purpose of the pull-up resistor. So this pull-up resistor will pull up the voltage at this point to VCC. Now, how 
do you select the value of the pull-up resistor? Well, a general rule of thumb is to basically uh, select this resistance to be, let's say, an order of magnitude or two order of magnitudes smaller than the internal resistance or the internal impedance of the microcontroller. You can check for every, every microcontrollers uh, every microcontroller has certain specifications and you can verify these specifications. But the general rule of thumb is to select either 10K or 4.7K ohm resistors to be pull-up resistors. On the other hand, when the switch is closed, what happens? Well, when you close, close the switch or when you press the button, the potential of the point A will be equal to the potential of the ground right so you're going to ground the point a the input pin that is your input pin will have a low state corresponding to digital zero now this is ensured by the fact that the resistance r1 is significant such that basically the ground is attached to a when the switch is being closed. Here you can see the basic usage of pull-down resistor. So this is a pull-down resistor. The R1 is a pull-down resistor. So when the switch is open, that is when the button is not being pressed, this point A, its voltage will be equal to the ground right it will be equal to the ground voltage that is zero that is it will be equal to the low state on the other hand when you close the switch when you press the button the voltage at the point a or the potential will be high that is corresponding to vcc now over here you can see a simple circuit that i used at the beginning of this video you have a cobbler, you attach 3.3 volts to this line, the second line is grounded, you attach a 4.7 kilo ohm resistor and basically this is your point A, you are reading voltage from the GPIO pin 27. There is another video and in that video I explained how to basically set up a Raspberry Pi, how to choose the cobbler, how to write basic codes and you should see this video if you are interested to know more about this. Finally, this is your button. Here is our code, our wiring Pi code, so we are using the library called wiring Pi. This is also explained in our previous video. This piece of code is used to attach the interrupt. So what is an interrupt? Well, in every code, we would like to perform certain operations. We would like to send certain values to input-output ports to read some values from the input-output ports. Now, we can do this in a main function. So this is our main function. In this while loop, we can basically all the time iterate and perform all the operations. So imagine a situation in which you would like to detect when this button is being pressed. So one of the options is to write a piece of code in the while function, in the main function, that will always check the state at the GPIO 27. That is, it, it is always going to check if the button is being pressed. Now, this consumes a lot of processing time, right? And we don't want to do this all the time. So, a better option is to basically define an interrupt, define a certain function that will be called when this switch is being pressed. That is, we don't want to read continuously in the main function in its while loop. We don't want to read every in every iteration the state 
of the GPIO 27. We would like to do something else, but when something happens, that is when someone presses the button, we want our code to stop and we want a certain piece of code to be executed. Well, the interrupts are actually achieving that. So the interrupts, as their name say, clearly says it and explains it, are interrupting the code. Here is our wiring pi code. Now, code line 20 is used to set up the wiring pi library. And on the code line 21, we are actually defining the interrupt. We are saying that basically input A, which corresponds to our GPIO 27, should be an interrupt. Then we are going to detect a falling edge so we can detect a signal going up or signal going down change in signal we are going to detect the falling edge why because we when we press the button the state of the system will go from high value to the low value that is it will fall down and this third argument of the function which stands for ampersand function a this is an artifact in my code created by my wordpress plugin so ignore this it should be just ampersand function a gives in the address of the function that will be called in case your switch is being pressed and here is our function so in this function when the switch being pressed we are simply increasing value of a counter that's initialized to be equal to zero. So, and finally, in the while loop, in the main function, we are just printing how many times the button is being pressed. We are never doing any digital read over here. Now, as I mentioned previously, and as you have seen in the, in the, at the beginning of this video, there is a problem with this code because the switch can debounce the values can debounce. So we, on top of this code, we have to write another code that will debounce the voltage value. That will ensure that if the switch debounces, that the events are not artificially counted. But that's the story for the next video. Thank you very much for your attention.